So in both cases, the question is just solve for x. Okay, solve for x. And you can see in this case why obviously it's going to be a quadratic. So what should I write first? Yeah. By Pythagoras. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and be a little lazy here because we're now sort of getting to the point where this is not a proof or a question really about Pythagoras. It's really about quadratics. Okay, that's again, that's what's really being assessed. Okay, but that's fine. It's true. That's your starting point. Naturally, the equation I'm going to write out of that is something like this. Okay. So there's my quadratic. So far, so good. And now kind of autopilot takes over. Right? I should expand here. So, okay, well, can you tell me what this expansion is? X squared minus 14x plus 14. Excellent. Okay. And let's see. Charmaine, can you tell me the next one from my hand side? Um, X squared. Excellent. Okay, so no big deal. Bit of routine cancelling to do. So we've got x squared here, x squared there. What else should I do really quickly? I've got x's over here, right? You can see this is not just going to simply cancel out. I'm going to need to collect my like terms and I want them all on the same side, don't I? Okay, so I'm going to bring these guys over and I'm also going to bring this guy over, right? So that'll leave me with my next line, which is x squared minus how many x? 18. 18x? That's why we do these, right? 49, I'm going to have to take away 4 from both sides, so I get 45. Look carefully, does it factorize nicely? Does it factorize nicely? Yeah. It's not a common one. Our, ma our brains immediately go five and nine. Yeah. Ah, forget it. Okay, but cle <laughs> clearly there's more there, right? Fifteen and three. So I'm gonna need to. What's my expansion going to be? X minus three. X minus three. X minus fifteen. So now I have two solutions. Does that look right? Yeah. And they're both positive, we're looking at lengths, right? Yeah. All good, yeah? No, no, not all good. Something is wrong. What's gone wrong? Okay, so I need to check for negatives, right? Mostly, everyone was kind of like, yeah, alright, I don't see anything negative here. But there is a negative. Where's the negative? When you like stop three. There he is, gotcha, right? Okay, so. This is where we have to be careful. This is why I've picked this question out, which gives you a bit of a clue as to what's going to happen here. This is not a solution. This is not a solution. These are both solutions to this, right? But these are not both solutions to this because this implies a, um, this implies a restriction, doesn't it? So in fact, what I should have done before I even wrote this down, I should have looked at this and this should have told me a restriction, namely... At the very least, right? Uh, this shouldn't be any other... Well, I mean, you know, obviously you want these to be positive, so, but that's kind of a given, right? This is really your sneaky one, okay? Because it looks okay, but it's not really, okay? So at this point, I would invoke the restriction that I noted earlier. I'd say this, therefore, x is 15 only. Okay, so I've given you a bit of a warm-up, so you should be a little more cluey when it comes to this one. Okay, this does not take much to... Solve, what should I do to every term? <coughs> I should multiply through by something which will eliminate all the fractions, right? Which looks to me like x, x minus 2. Yeah? So in this case, you're just going to simply wipe off the denominator. In this case, you're going to be left with the x minus 2 on the numerator. And likewise, you're just going to get an x over there. Okay? I'll expand a little bit. 4x minus 8 equals 5x. Now tell me what to do. I can do a bit of, I mean, yeah, I mean, to keep everything nice and neat and positive, I'll just keep the constants over here and I'll bring the x over there. Therefore, no solution. What? Right. Good. Again, like I said, you got clued in uh, right before you start to solve, before you write down any working. Note the restrictions. Restrictions first. Okay? Before you do any working, because...
by the time you embark on your work and you forget about the restrictions, particularly if you're in a hurry and you're under exam pressure, these are the kinds of things that catch you. So right up here, before I started working, I should have said x can't equal to 0, uh, x can't equal to 2. And there's my restriction, right? This is always a safer way to go about it than to do your working and then count on yourself to remember, oh, I'd better check if this works or not, right? Get it right from the outset, and then when you arrive, you'll be expecting it, you'll anticipate it. Can I just say, as I was mentioning earlier, when you get an assessment, the assessments are crafted by us to assess whether you can actually watch out for things like this, right? So even though these kinds of questions will not commonly come up in an in, in exercise, even though this one does, this one doesn't, right? But that's because they're exercises. They're like standard questions. Assessments are designed to sift people out and work out what's the difference between, can you, can you do the algebra, but can you go further and note that there are restrictions in place? These are called extraneous solutions because they are solutions that are actually extra outside of what, is, what makes sense in the situation that you've been provided. Okay, so if you want a label for them, that's what they're called. And they're bad. So notice them. <laughs>